Welcome, everybody. A very, very special welcome to those involved with God's Cottage, to the readers and promoters of the Curate's Diary, and to those of you who truly at this stage are my YouTube family. I remember your intentions every morning in Mass. Sincere thanks to those of you who give the videos the thumbs up and those who place the comments underneath. I certainly had no plans to make another video about Dr. Taylor Marshall in the near future. However, I have been contacted by some members of our YouTube family with concerns about another recent video of his, which they found upsetting. Now, before I go on to that particular video, I'll just refer again to the one I covered in my last video. Hope allows fake mass by fake bishop on the altar in Rome. Now, a couple of little details I didn't know or wasn't sure enough to put in the video. Pope Francis had absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with allowing that Eucharistic celebration. And that was clarified by the Vatican since. My thanks, by the way, to those viewers who gave me the precise quotations. My apologies, I haven't reached on thanking you all in person. And what you did was, you proved that what, do what Dr. Taylor Marshall said was another falsehood. Now, supposing you have published a video that turned out to contain false information, and that false information was doing real damage to Pope Francis, what would you do? Would you not immediately take down your video? Would you not take make some efforts to correct the record? And would you not go to confession? Repent of your sins? Is that not what any good Catholic would do? And what would a good Christian do? Apart from going to confession, would a good Christian still not take down the video and do what was in their power to correct the record? And what would a decent human being do? Would a decent human being and not a Christian at all at all? Would a decent human being not take down the video and do what was in their power to correct the record? Now, given that Dr. Taylor Marshall still has that video up, does that not prove, number one, he is not a good Catholic? Number two, that he is not a good Christian? And number three, that he is not a decent human being. The question then is, is it worse than that? Could it be that he is a double agent? Now, how would a double agent respond to the situation where he realised that he had published something that was false about Pope Francis and that this thing that he had published that was false, false was causing a lot of anger against Pope Francis? I'll tell you what a double agent would, would do. He would almost certainly say to himself, it worked. They fell for it. Let's try the same thing again. Would you agree that if we find Dr. Taylor Marshall doing what is effectively the same thing again, that it almost conclusively proves that he is in fact a double agent? we find that he makes a further false allegation against Pope Francis that's doing Pope Francis damage, are we not right in concluding that actually Dr. Taylor Marshall is sadly a double agent? Let us look at the evidence. One of his next videos was the one in which he claimed that there was something suspicious about the death of Cardinal Pell. And a sort of points the finger in the direction of Pope Francis and, and those around Pope Francis and totally fails to mention that Cardinal Pell had a long history of heart trouble and that he had a pacemaker inserted 10 years ago. If that isn't proof enough, let us look at his next one. Now, before I go on to the next one, I have to tell you I will be unable to speak the full title of the next one aloud. The full title of the next one is so sinful, so sinful, that I cannot say every word in it aloud. The very title of the video, it's vulgar, and it contains a grave sin against Jesus Christ. 
So I cannot speak it aloud. I will briefly let you see uh, where, where he has it. I can speak aloud the first two words of his video title. Pope honours, and then it refers to an artist. But how could Pope Francis honour an artist if he doesn't actually know the artist? At the event in question, there was a large gathering of artists. Did Pope Francis know all the artists there? Did he know this particular artist? And if it turns out he didn't, how can we say Pope Francis honoured an artist he didn't even know? I will just give you a glimpse of the rest of the title of his video. And because it is a sinful sentence for me to read it out would also be a sin. You can see it there, but I'm not reading it out. I'll come back to it later. But the very title of his video is sinful. Sinful. Utterly uncalled for. No justification. But here he is, effectively alleging that Pope Francis knew this particular artist. Remember that this was a big, big gathering of artists. And do you really think that Pope Francis had gone over the invitation list? Do you really think that Pope Francis knew who was getting invited to this gathering of artists? Do you really think that Pope Francis actually um, knew Andres Serrano? I don't know if he did know. Let's be clear about that. I don't know if Pope Francis did know Andres Serrano, but I doubt it. And claiming that Pope Francis has honoured a person that he may not even know. That to me is once again in the area of slander, blasphemy, blasphemy. Same word in the, the New Testament for slander is for blasphemy. So once again, instead of repenting of what he had done before, Dr. Taylor Marshall goes and does it again. Pope Francis has honoured this guy who's famous for the so-called art, his Christ, or as he calls it, immersion. And I wasn't going to show the image because it's sacrilegious, but I thought, you know what? People need to see this disgusting sacrilege against our Lord and Savior, second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ. Here's the image from the 1980s. It's called immersion or his Christ. It's a crucifix of our Lord Jesus Christ immersed in the artist's own urine. He filled up a plexiglass frame of piss and then he submerged the most sacred image in the universe. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for our sins and he put it in piss. Firstly, yes, Andres Serrano, his work of art was disgusting. Let's not mince words about that. It was disgusting. However, a second little detail, he does briefly allude to it, but he alludes it to it so quickly that most people probably doesn't catch. When was that, that work of so-called art produced? I'll tell you when it was produced. It was produced in 1987. That is 36 years ago. 36 years ago. It was back in the last century. Indeed, it was back in the last millennium. And supposing there was a big party of your extended family, whether you were at it or not, but there was, suppose there was a big party, a big event, with a large number of your extended family taking place, and somebody turned up uh, to that particular event, whether invited by your father or by your grandfather, maybe yes, maybe no, but somebody turned up to it who was responsible for doing a disgusting work, work of art, 36 years ago, 36 years ago. And suppose your father or your grandfather, your papa, reached out to hand of friendship to that particular person. 
what would you think of some other member of your extended family going on YouTube and denouncing in the strongest possible terms your father or your grandfather because they reached out the hand of friendship to the person who did the disgusting work of art some 36 years ago. And that is exactly what we are having here. The Catholic Church is my family, my family. And while I sometimes criticise Pope Francis, and I'm not slow to criticise Pope Francis when there are issues, but he still is my Papa, my Pope. And Dr. Taylor Marshall has gone on YouTube, has gone before thousands and thousands of people to make all sorts of allegations about our Papa, our Pope, our Father, over him greeting somebody who did a disgusting work of art 36 years ago. 36 years ago. In the last century. In the last millennium. Now since COVID, at public masses, I have replaced the sign of peace before communion with a little reflection. And during the little reflection, I ask people to ask Jesus, is there somebody they need to forgive? That's the first question. And the second question is, is there something from the past that they need to let go of? So you can guess what I would say to somebody who came up to me and, and started growling about somebody who had made a disgusting work, work of art 36 years ago. 36 years ago. In the last century. In the last millennium. But you can guess what I'd tell such a person. And then there is a second little detail which needs to be pointed out. Dr. Taylor Marshall calls that disgusting work of art, which it is, it's a disgusting work of art, he calls it blasphemy. Has he really mentioned and explained what the artist Andres Serrano had in mind in making that disgusting work of art? He was objecting to the manner in which we have trivialized as the crucifix, to, to the manner in which it, it has become a commercial project, being trivialized. People wearing these fancy little crucifixes, and I'm not saying they shouldn't. But I'm seeing it now from the, the point of view of Andres Serrano. And he was saying, look, these little crucifixes, these fancy little crucifixes that you're wearing around your neck, they bear no reality to the horror of the crucifixion. We may agree with him or we may not agree with him and I don't agree with, with the way in which he done that. I don't agree. But at least I'm prepared to listen to what he had in mind. As a matter of interest, it was the sixth century before people started putting the image of Jesus on the crucifix. They had such a horror of uh, what happened of the crucifixion scene that for the first five centuries, yes, they did have crosses, but crosses without the figure of Jesus on them. People in the early church would have been shocked by our pretty little crucifixes. They would have been shocked. And furthermore, it was only in the 1800s, the late 1800s, when King Frederick the Seventh of Denmark gave a gift of a crucifix to his daughter on the occasion of her wedding to the Prince of Wales. Only then did the wearing of crucifixes become popular. The early church would not have understood our glamorizing, our sanitizing of the crucifix. And while I disagree with the artist Andrew Serrano for his disgusting depiction of uh, the crucifixion, yet I have to say that while it's disgusting, at least he had a point. But what reason has Dr. Taylor Marshall for repeatedly 
using the vulgar name for, uh, for urine and adjoining it to the word Christ. The name by which we often uh, know Jesus. What possible excuse has he? What possible reason has he for doing so? And if, as he claims, what Andrew Serrano did is, is blasphemy. Well, on what basis can one claim that his repeated, repeated use of the slang word for urine and adjoining it to the name of Jesus, to the word Christ, the name by which we so often uh, know Jesus. What possible explanation has he for doing that? Why, for example, did he not say controversial artist? That would have cut out this whole business of um, using the vulgar name for urine and adjoining it to the name for Jesus. But why did he not use the word controversial artist instead of the one he did use? And I can only think of two possible reasons. Number one, he reckoned he wouldn't get as many views for his video. And so he wouldn't get as much advertisement re revenue if he was to use the phrase controversial artist instead of the phrase he did use. And the second possible explanation, and the two can could be true, the second ex possible explanation, in his malice against Pope Francis, malice against Pope Francis, he was trying to, to throw as, as much muck at Pope Francis as he possibly could. Well, guess what? He was throwing the muck into the wind, and it was blowing straight back on himself. Pope Francis honored him. And now he's going to honor people who make this blasphemous sacrilege evil. Evil. You know, Jesse Romero said there's bad people and there's evil people. Evil people promote the expansion of evil in the world. There's bad people, you know, they lie. They cheat. They're not good people. You don't want them. Like, it's the bad person. Bad person in your family. Then there are evil people who are on the agenda of Satan to actually expand the darkness of evil. There are different ways in which a person can promote evil, can promote the kingdom of Satan. One of those is raking up something that happened 36 years ago. Suppose in a family there was a falling out, there was something disgusting happened 36 years ago and 36 years later family members uh, are not prepared to let go of it. That is promoting the kingdom of Satan. Another way to promote the kingdom of Satan is slander. The making of slanderous allegations, falsehoods. And think of the person who has the audacity to even slander the Pope. To slander the Pope. Think how serious it is for a person to slander the Pope. When a person slanders the Pope, they sin not just against the Pope, but against every Catholic. They are sinning against every Catholic. And there is no group of people they are sinning against more than those unfortunate people who have the misfortune to believe the slanders that are being made against the Pope. You know, there was one thing that always puzzled me. How on earth did Satan manage to lead all the other angels out of heaven? We believe he led one third of the angels out of heaven. How on earth did he manage it? I could never figure that one out, but now I can. Because I see a person called Dr. Taylor Marshall, poisoning Catholics, leading people who up to now, before they had the misfortune to come under his sway, were good and loyal Catholics walking in the ways of the Lord. 
But now, Dr. Taylor Marshall is such a manipulator, a manipulator, a falsifier, a slanderer, that he is able to lead people who had up to now been good and faithful Catholics into disharmony with the Catholic Church, leading many of them possibly out of the Catholic Church. That is promoting the work of Satan on earth. That is truly being an evil person. There is no way our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wants this to be created and then he wants the so-called vicar of Christ, that he would want the successor of St. Peter on earth to honor the evil wickedness of this. Well, here's Andrew Serrano, the guy honored. There's Pope Francis honoring this evil artist. At no stage does Dr. Taylor Marshall give us the tiniest little bit of information to show that Pope Francis actually knows Andres Serrano, that he knows that this is the artist that painted, that produced this, that disgusting work of art. Not one shred of evidence does Dr. Taylor Marshall feel a need to tell us. It's his say-so. Furthermore, look at what the honouring, what he calls the honouring of Andre Serrano. Andre Serrano gets the opportunity to have a chat with Pope Francis. He still may not know who he is, and if he has got his name, he may not know his history. And even if he did know his history, do you really think a Pope of God would hold against somebody something they did 36 years ago, in the last century, in the last millennium? Would any Pope hold a personal grudge against somebody for what they did 36 years ago? And look at what the honouring consists of. Clearly, they're having a conversation. And it would appear that Andres Serrano has said something. We don't know what it is. But Andres Serrano had said something that caused Pope Francis to give him the thumbs up. We don't know what it is. It almost certainly had absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with the disgusting work of art Andrew Serrano did 36 years ago. Here's what Pope Francis said at this meeting. Now, there were many artists there. Andrew Serrano was one of them. And this is to honor modern artists going back to Paul VI. You know, Paul VI, who has that weird kind of snakehead building in the Vatican. Yeah. Here's the speech from the Pope, part of it, translation. He compared the artists to visionaries and prophets who introduced novelty into history and said that like the biblical prophets, you confront things that at times are uncomfortable. You criticize today's false myths and new idols, its empty talk, the poise of consumerism, the schemes of power. He's saying this to Andrew Serrano, the guy who submerged our Lord and your, this guy's getting praised as a prophet, as a visionary by Francis Bergoglio? H to the no, get out of town. Pope Francis was giving a talk to a large gathering of artists. And notice how Dr. Taylor Marshall starts picking out phrases from it and applying them directly to Andres Serrano. Now, when he joined the Catholic Church, Dr. Taylor Marshall did have the option to become a Catholic priest. Well, thanks be to God, he didn't. I can just see him getting up on the altar and he's spotting somebody in the congregation who committed some sin 36 years ago, in the last century, in the last millennium. And he feels a need to make cutting remarks concerning that person in his homily. Then Francis goes on to say, this is an intriguing aspect of the psychology of artists, the ability to press forward and beyond, and the tension between reality and dream. Francis goes on, 
Often you do this with irony, which is a marvelous virtue. Humor and irony are the two virtues we need to cultivate more. Okay, time out, world. Pope Francis says, humor and irony are the virtues we need to cultivate more. First off, humor and irony are not virtues. Open up the Summa Theologiae. Go through the virtues. Humor and irony? You're telling me, Francis Bergoglio, that the virtues we need to cultivate are humor and irony, which aren't even virtues. Where did Francis Bergoglio go to seminary to learn that humor and irony are virtues? Notice how he dismisses the possibility that humor and irony could be virtues because of the fact that St. Thomas Aquinas did not list them as virtues. He is taking what St. Thomas Aquinas said as the full list of virtues, and because he, he doesn't find those two there, then in his book they are not virtues. Where on earth did he qualify for his doctorate? That because one saint back years ago didn't list something as virtues, then they are not virtues. That doesn't sound very doctor-like to me. I am sure that what Pope Francis was referring to was Christian humour and Christian irony. And Christian humour and Christian irony certainly can be virtues. Just think a moment of how they could be applied to Dr. Taylor Marshall. Did you spot there all the ways in which he referred to Pope Francis, Francis Bergoglio? not once giving him the honour of calling him Pope Francis. Bergoglio, Bergoglio, Francis, Francis, Bergoglio, Francis, Francis. Get out of town. Did you hear all that? Now for a moment, listen to a, to a video when he was wanting to attack President Zelensky of Ukraine. Now it seems to me that Dr. Taylor Marshall hates President Zelensky of Ukraine even more than he hates Pope Francis. And when he was claiming, without a shred of real evidence, apart from what some journalist had said to the Vladimir Putin's task news agency, that uh, President Zelensky had offended uh, Pope Francis. Just listen to how he referred to the Pope on that occasion to the Pope, Supreme Pontiff, Vicar of Christ, reputed to be the pastor of pastors and the servants of servants of all Christians. I trust that you can see the irony in how he can have such immense reverence for Pope Francis when it suits him. But it is sudden onset reverence and it is quickly back to Bergoglio, Bergoglio, Bergoglio. Now let us listen to what he said has to say about the truth. We perhaps may be able to see quite an amount of irony there also. This is about truth, all right? It's not about feelings. Jesus didn't say, I am the way, the feelings, and the life. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. Not the way, the emotions, and the life. Where was Dr. Taylor Marshall's commitment to the truth when he falsely accused President Zelensky of Ukraine of having blotted out the image of Jesus in a painting by a leading artist of Ukraine? Where was Dr. Taylor Marshall's commitment to the truth when he falsely accused Pope Francis of having allowed what he called a fake mass by a fake bishop? Where is Dr. Taylor Marshall's commitment to the truth when he continuously implies that Pope Francis personally invited Andres Serrano to this gathering of artists? When he continuously implies that Pope Francis knew who he was without giving us any evidence uh, that he did know? And where was his commitment to the truth? when he tried to tell us that there was something suspicious about the death of Cardinal Pell and didn't mention to us Cardinal Pell's long history of heart trouble. 
And then there's the Bible. I think if we look at what he says about the Bible, we might be able to see room for a bit of Christian irony where he refers to the Bible. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And again, all the references in the Bible about slander, about how slander uh, blocks a person from heaven and about how one is not even meant to associate with a slanderer. But there's another one as well. And by coincidence, some things like this are not really a coincidence. They could be called a God incidence. But the Gospel in this morning's Mass for uh, Friday, it read, While he was at dinner in the house, it happened that a number of tax collectors and sinners came to sit at table with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your master eat with tax collectors and sinners? When he heard this, he replied, It is not the healthy who need the doctor but the sick. Go and learn the meaning of the words. What I want is mercy, not sacrifice. Now, do you really think that Jesus would have questioned those sinners who sat with him at table? Did you do something disgusting 37 years ago? And even if Jesus knew that somebody who was sitting at table with him had done something disgusting 37 years ago. Do you really think that Jesus would not have spoken to that person? Do you really think that Jesus would have called that person out? Do you really think if any Pope, if a Pope is a true servant of Jesus Christ, that he will call out somebody for something they did 37 years ago? That he will refuse to meet somebody because of something he did 37 years ago. Now again, if Dr. Taylor Marshall had the virtue of Christian irony and humour, he might see how utterly, utterly ridiculous he himself is, raking up and creating a major dispute within our church, creating major bitterness within our church, turning people against our Pope because Pope Francis, perhaps who didn't even know that uh, the, the artist in question, wel welcomed an artist who had created a disgusting piece of art 37 years ago, in the last century and in the last millennium. And note all, also the phrase, what I want is mercy, not sacrifice. Do you really think that um, Jesus is concerned about the language in which we uh, go to Mass? All this business about the Latin Mass supposedly, supposedly being the right Mass. What I want is mercy, not sacrifice. That's what Jesus would say. And those with what Pope Francis calls the virtue of Christian irony, and indeed humour, may spot something else as well. Did you spot how utterly, utterly outraged Dr. Taylor Marshall was over that work of art that Andre Serrano produced 36 years ago? Utterly outraged, isn't he? Well, what does he do himself? Does he ever lose an opportunity in that video for using the vulgar name for urine and linking it to the name we very often use for Jesus, the name Christ. Does he miss an opportunity to do so, even in the title? There was absolutely no reason whatsoever why he should have used that vulgar name for urine and the name adjoined to the name of Christ in the title or in many other places along during the video. So why did he do it? And what does it say about where he really stands, where the name of Jesus is concerned? Is it a case like his respect for the Pope, where he had certain onset respect for the Pope when he was talking about President Zelensky? Or is it a bit like his respect for the truth? Great at being able to talk about the value of the truth and very poor in deliverance of the truth? Or is it a bit like his respect for the Bible?
respecting the Bible and not living by its teaching? Change in the catechism, change in the canon law, change in the mass, change in the seven sacraments, change in the music, change in the vestments. It's a change in the heart. Part of what happened after the 1960s, it was to make things ugly. To make things repulsive. I... So he calls the mass which I love, the mass which is the center of my day, the mass around which my life centers, because in the mass I meet Jesus, my life centers around Jesus. And he calls our mass ugly. Ugly. Even the vestments I wear which means so much to me, he calls ugly. It strikes me that a true Catholic would not call the Mass ugly, or the vestments would wear for Mass ugly. It strikes me that they would only be called ugly by somebody who is in fact a double agent. A false prophet. Earlier in his video, Dr. Marshall had to go at Pope Paul VI. I didn't quite get the reference. I just understood he was having a go at Pope Paul VI. He also has a go at Pope John Paul II. He is unhappy with the luminous mysteries of the rosary. There's something terrible about the luminous mysteries of the rosary that Dr. Taylor Marshall is unhappy with. And he is unhappy with everything he claims to have happened in the Catholic Church since 1960. Now, once again, that raises a question, doesn't it? Why did Dr. Taylor Marshall become a Catholic? Since all these things he's complaining about were in the Catholic Church at the time when he joined. So why did he become a Catholic? But I ask a more fundamental question. Has he become a Christian? That is the question. The most fundamental question of all. Has he ever, ever been a Christian? In the book of Revelation, we read how the accuser of the brethren has been thrown down from heaven. Well, where did the accuser of the brethren go when he was thrown down from heaven? I will tell you where he has gone. And where he always goes, he goes into the hearts and minds of people like Dr. Taylor Marshall. And there's a whole nest of them. There's a whole nest of them. And in fact, this particular episode over the artist Andres Serrano and the disgusting work of art he produced 37 years ago, it has brought this whole nest of them out into the open. You can see them all over the place. They're all teaming up with one another. A whole nest of people who are using something that happened 37 years ago, in the last century, in the last millennium, to throw muck at Pope Francis, to make all sorts of allegations against Pope Francis. One extremely strong sign that somebody is in fact under the power of the kingdom of darkness is the ongoing making of false allegations, the ongoing stirring up of ungodly divisions. For the accuser of our brethren has been cast down, he who accuses them day and night before our God. You find a person who is making false allegations against God's people day and night, then you have almost certainly found a person who is a double agent, who is under the power of the kingdom of darkness, who cannot possibly be a good Catholic, cannot possibly be a true Christian, but rather is a double agent, a false prophet. A double agent. In the comments beneath the first of my videos about Dr. Taylor Marshall, where I, I asked, is Dr. Taylor Marshall a false prophet? Incidentally, a number of his supporters pointed out 
that he has never claimed to be a prophet. Now, if they knew either the Bible or the teaching of Pope Francis, they would know that we are all called to be prophets. That is our, our calling, to prepare the way for the Lord. And you shall be called a prophet of God the Most High, for you shall go ahead of the Lord to prepare his way before him. That is what a prophet does, prepares the way for the Lord. That is all our calling, to prepare the way for the Lord. And somebody who is pretending to prepare the way for the Lord and instead expanding the kingdom of Satan, that person is a false prophet. But one person beneath that video suggested that Dr. Taylor Marshall was in it for the money, in it for the money. And I immediately challenged that person and said, no, I wouldn't accept that. But guess what? I'm beginning to accept it. Why otherwise would Dr. Taylor Marshall so often produce these controversial videos attacking Pope Francis? The more controversial the title of a video is, the more likely it is to be viewed by big numbers of thousands. In the past few months alone, Dr. Taylor Marshall has made considerable advertisement revenue out of his videos with the following titles. The Five Popes in Hell. Jordan Peter blasts the Pope. Is Francis really the Pope? with illeg illegitimate in the video image. Why did the Pope meet in secret with Pfizer CEO? Depraved priest gets pass from Pope Francis. Will Pope continue persecuting Catholics? Is the Pope against Christ? Pope plans a new world order. Pope Francis approves abomination. Why is Francis's Vatican so toxic and scandalous? Did Pope Benedict th think Francis was Antichrist? Vatican conservatives plan to remove Pope Francis. Was Satan enthroned at Vatican in 1963? Francis persecutes the good and promotes evildoers. Pope Francis's sinister management style. Would Pope Francis cancel Mother Angelica today? Pope Francis cancels P Father Pavone and covers for degenerate Jesuit. Pope Benedict's secretary destroyed his correspondence. Pope Francis wants to legalize sodomy. End game. Cardinals mobilizing against Pope Francis. Was Pope Benedict forced to resign? Pope Benedict was heartbroken over Francis restricting Latin mass. And the series goes on and on. Pope allows fake mass at fake altar in Rome. And then the one suggesting there was something sinister about the death of um, Cardinal Pell. And then there's this video which I'm now reviewing, the title of which is so sinful, not just so disgusting, but so sinful that I cannot even speak it aloud. Controversial titles. And within them, in order to come up with these controversial titles, he has never allowed truth to get in his way. Never once. And out of it, he has undoubtedly made a considerable amount of revenue. Dr. Taylor Marshall is making money. Making money. Slandering Pope Francis. Attacking the Catholic Church. And let me tell you now, to slander a Pope is a very grave sin. Grave matter, full consent, and if he doesn't know that slandering a Pope is wrong, why does he not know it? I'm very grateful to the audience 
Over the last month, we reached 500,000 subscribers here on YouTube. 500,000. Thank you to everyone who likes, hits the subscribe button, shares these videos. We did it. Half a million people. So Dr. Taylor Marshall has got half a million subscribers. But how many of these has he gained by his expertise at falsehoods, at slander, at manipulation? How many of these has he gained by all his slandering of Pope Francis and church leadership? Earlier he referred to the Bible. I trust that he is aware of Jesus saying, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and lose his very soul? Worse still, what does a, a profit a man if he gains 500,000 subscribers and is responsible not just for poisoning himself, but for poisoning his subscribers as well? Jesus said, It is inevitable that stumbling blocks will come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him to have a millstone hung round his neck and to be thrown into the sea than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. To cause even one of these little ones to stumble. How many little ones has Dr. Taylor Marshall caused to stumble as a result of this video alone? Think of all the people he has embittered against Pope Francis over the fact that Pope Francis greeted a person who did something horrible 36 years ago. 36 years ago. Pope Francis, who possibly didn't know the man at all, reached out the hand of friendship to him. But whether he knew him or not, the incident in question, the disgusting work of art in question was produced 36 years years ago, in the last century, in the last millennium. What, how do you think that Jesus feels about this Dr. Taylor Marshall? Using something that happened 36 years ago to stir up bitterness against the church, to stir up bitterness against Pope Francis. And he is stirring up bitterness against Pope Francis and stirring up ungodly divisions in the church. All you have to do is look at the comments underneath. One person, I am speechless. This is so evil and the Pope honours this artist. The po this Pope can't be a Pope in Jesus' church. And already when I looked at it, that particular comment had received 123 likes. Another one, I absolutely hate having an anti-Catholic Pope, an anti-Catholic Pope. And that particular comment had received 609 likes. Dr. Taylor Marshall is willingly leading his followers into rebellion against the Catholic Church and into rebellion against Pope Francis. It would be better for him if he went out and earned his money as a male prostitute. Far better. Meanwhile, Lord, we come in prayer. It grieves us. It grieves us. And there are many things within our church that also grieve us. And there are many things within our church that I'll have to speak about. Some people won't be happy when I speak about them. But there are the problems within our church. And we pray, Lord, for the gift of wisdom. The gift of wisdom. To always have respect for Pope Francis and for whoever is Pope. Even when the Pope is wrong. The grace, Lord, to still be able to have respect for him. Even when we may challenge some of what he's doing or saying. The grace to be able to do so with absolute adherence to the truth and with respect for the Pope as Pope. The Grace Lord, to be able to spot all those people who are slandering Pope Francis and slandering our church. The Grace to be able to spot them, 
to come against them, to rescue people from their clutches. Yes, Lord, we pray for that grace. I prayed for this video. I know there'll be a negative reaction to this video in some quarters, and I accept that. And I offer that up. But I pray, Lord, that this video will somehow touch the mind and heart of some person who is being trapped by all this slander against Pope Francis. That somehow, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that somebody's life will be touched, that somebody will have their eyes opened by this video, that the forces of the evil one in somebody's heart and in somebody's mind will be broken. We pray for the grace, Lord, to always stand for the truth, even when it is difficult to do, difficult to do so. And we pray, Lord, for the synodal process at the moment taking place in our church. Lord, I do have concerns about it. I have considerable concerns about it. But we pray, Lord, that our church will listen to your voice and not to the voice of the world. And we pray, Lord, for all those out there who have become alienated from our church, whether it is alienated as a result of people like Dr. Marshall or alienated as a result of the liberal agenda or as a result of the influence of the world, whatever has caused people to become alienated. We pray that we may, each of us in our own lives, respond to the call to be prophets. Prophets who go ahead of the Lord to prepare the, his way before him. For that grace, Lord, we pray for myself and for all in church leadership, but for every baptised person to realise that they have a calling as a prophet. You shall be a prophet of God the Most High, and you shall go before him and prepare the way for him. And for that grace we pray for each of us and for our church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, and thank you.